I want to talk a little bit about the Mole Island Diagram. Now this is a, a schematic diagram that will help us focus on figuring out how many steps are used in stoichiometry. It's just made up, but it's kind of fun and helps you remember it a little bit better. So these are the guys that are going to tell us what to do at Mole Island. Now they're moles. I know they're really not. They're just hedgehogs or some other little critter. But for, as a chemistry teacher, I'm calling them moles. Well, uh, the things they're thinking about, these moles on Mole Island, are things like one mole of a substance always equal its molar mass. We'll need to know that later on. They're also thinking about one mole is equal to Avogadro's number, or 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. And the last guy, he's probably thinking one mole is equal to 22.4 liters. That's for a gas at what is referred to standard temperature and pressure. Standard temperature is zero degrees Celsius and standard pressure is one atmosphere. While we're in the stoichiometry unit, we will solve all our problems at STP. When we move on to the gas laws unit, we will correct this and go to conditions other than standard temperature and pressure. This is the overview of the map that I call Mole Island Diagram. It involves going from one substance, substance A, to substance B. And I've colored them sort of a greenish blue color and a darker blue color here. Uh, we have three different locations or fingers. You can see I have sort of a mini-me version or a small version up here. I sometimes will refer to this as the little dirty birdie feet. Okay, And we have some points. Up here we have what I call mass mountain. And here we're thinking about the molar mass of a substance. And then we have another spot down here. I call this particle place. And it refers to all the particles in a big city. So perhaps in a large city if we count all the insects and people and cockroaches, we might come up with about 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd. In the middle here we have what I call liter lagoon. Now it's maybe not a good term because the liter here is of a gas and when you think of a lagoon you think of a liquid. But nevertheless I'm calling it liter lagoon. And then what connects these is moles of our substance A. Then we cross this middle bridge and we go from moles of substance A to moles of substance B and then it repeats again on the other side where we have molar mass of substance B, the volume of substance B, and the number of particles. Now we will get to use this and use this a lot in stoichiometry. So much so, and you'll find such value that I will, and you might refer to this, as the MVP. So MVP might stand for most valuable player, but here it stands for mass, volume, and particles. Let me add a little more meat onto the bones here. Well, there's our tour guides. And the moles are really the center of this whole thing. They're what's going to allow us to go from one substance to another. Okay? So on this one, now this is one you might want to print out. You might find it useful in your class. Notice that I go from mass of one substance to moles of that substance by using the equality one mole equals the molar mass. The molar mass will be calculated from the periodic table. Over here, when we're going to volume, we have one mole is always equal to 22.4 liters. That's for a gas at standard temperature and pressure. And down in the bottom corner, we have particles. And the conversion between particles and moles says one mole is equal to 6.02 times 10 to the 23rd particles. Now, usually these particles are either atoms or molecules. It's whatever is given in the problem. I refer to the end here, probably I would use the term these are the fingers and these are the toes. So on my little dirty birdie feet, fingers and toes always have one of the conversion factors as one mole, one mole, one mole. And you'll see the same thing on the other side, one mole for every single one of these. Okay. Now, how do we go from substance A to substance B? Well, according to this, it says use the coefficients from the balanced chemical equation. And I will do that as I solve the problem so you'll see how we'll work here. Now, this map will allow us to figure out the number of steps. 
if we start at mass of one substance and we go to volume of another substance, that will take one, then it will take two, and finally three steps to get there. And I'll demonstrate that throughout in all these slides. Okay, so hopefully this is the Mole Island diagram that I will be using and it will be some use to you as well.